Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. Well, good morning and Happy holidays to you. It's still the holiday season. It's almost New Year's, and it's time for us to get together and talk some football. That's me and number 61, number one in your hearts, Nate Newton, who's got uh, a very important thing to say. And this week, it might be a little agitated, a little irritated when he says, Let me tell you something, man. You know what, Rad? Can't nobody take away from the season, man. You know, I I know what Christmas mean. I know what the birth of Christ and all of that. And so that can't be not taken away from Big Noon because I that that is who I am and that is the walk that I walk. So my Christmas was beautiful with my family, my kids, my my wife, and everything was perfect. And I hope everybody out there was perfect. And Rad, how was your holidays? Oh man, that's so. Uh, that's such a great way to start this, Nate. Especially uh, following a Cowboys loss, and in despite sitting there on Christmas Eve watching the Cowboys lose with my son-in-law, who's one of the biggest Cowboy fans in the world, ah. it was a fantastic Christmas. It's a fantastic one, and uh, it was awesome. And and it is uh, a, such an important day, it, you know, for those of us who are Christians. It is the day yes. uh, where where it all began, and so um, yeah, we appreciate the reason for the season, no doubt about that. Now, uh, was that the season in any sort of way <laughs> on Christmas Eve when the Cowboys proved again they're beatable on the road? It, you know what? It's so many different ways. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Niagara, man. I mean, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Especially this morning, I had a great flush. Believe that. Believe that when I tell you that. <laughs> but, <laughs> I bet that's true. Oh man, um, I bet that's yes. true. But uh, where, where do you want to start? I mean, where do you want to start with this? I, I'm gonna let you well, lead this, my friend. You tell me okay, where you so, want to start. So let, let's start with the biggest part of the picture, which is the um, continuing inability to win in particular the big game but really a lot of games on the road I mean is this correctable because it's pretty clear the Cowboys will have to play at least one maybe two possibly all three on the road uh, can they win can they after what they've done throughout this regular season can they go on the road and win in the playoffs that, that, that is a that is a big question I think what well, last year we won one on the road uh uh this this is ugly for the Dallas Cowboys because Jimmy Johnson has always told us it's not about, especially when you go on the road, it's not about the big plays because that is what gives you momentum. It's about not making that bad play that takes away all your momentum, uh, hurts you with your confidence, and puts everybody in a bad situation. The Cowboys have not been able to overcome themselves either through penalties or not making the play. Or, or, and that comes down to, and I hate to say this, because one thing, I've been a Cowboy fan since I was 10, 11 years old. And I, I, I started out, Cowboys had like 20 winning seasons, 20 playoff seasons. So all I knew was goodness. And when I got to the Cowboys, we had a little bit of lull, but the goodness started up again. What I have realized is that these guys mentally are not making the plays. You have to believe that you can make the play during the game uh, at the biggest of moments. Right. I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to race forward right quick. Like a lot of yeah. people want to say uh, the kid, uh, number 40, uh, Lempke. That, oh, yeah. The, the fumble. no, Oh, Parsons, late hit on the court. No. Let's go to the bottom line and let's not waste no time. 
you had three minutes and 27 seconds. Dak went down and scored. Gave you a one-point lead. It was 19 to 20. Am I correct? That was the score. Yes, it was. Three minutes and 27, 27 seconds left. They get the ball. They run a play, and I think they get two or three yards, but we get a face mask. Ain't that a bad play? Isn't that a negative play? It ain't about the big plays you make. It's the negative plays you make. Then they had a pass. Then they had a run. Then they ran, ran, ran. And then all of a sudden, you have no more timeouts. They run the clock down to little or nothing and they kick a field goal to win. Now, the defense was on the field, did not make the proper plays, and even had a bad play. I'm not going at the defense. They only gave up one touchdown. They only gave up 22 points. So everybody say the offense. But you know what? Let's flip it on the other other side. Let's say they were leading. 19, uh, uh, 20 to 19, and they had the ball, and they had to go, and, and, they, and we had the ball, and we had to go down and score. We have not offensively, we have not defensively proved that we're mentally strong to make that play or to stop that play, as special teams included. When have we been, when have we went on the road recently against a good team and made that play, whether it was offensively, whether it was defensively, or special teams. If you go back and you check the records, we have always been able to make those I'm talking about when I played. We were able to make those plays. In the earlier Landry days, they were able to make them plays. I don't know if it's a lack of belief, a lack of talent, or both, but until you understand that you have to make the right plays. For weeks in and weeks out, we have been complaining about the refs. So are you telling me we lead the league in penalties because the referees then got together and a little crone and said, hey, let's make sure we just continue to throw flags on the Cowboys or don't throw flags on the Cowboys. That, that, that's hard for me to believe. What we have to do. You're not buying that. You're no. not buying that conspiracy. Nah. Rad, the bottom okay. line is this right here. You have to make the plays, either defensively, offensively, or special teams, as players and as coaches. Uh, uh, I know I said I would let you lead this, but it seems like I've I've taken <laughs> over and I'm sorry. But it's all good. But let me let me say this right here. Number one. Number one, you have C.D. Lamb with not with a hundred and hundred about nine, a hundred nineteen yards. Yeah, and all of that in the first quarter. Ninety five of that is in the first quarter, and then he disappears for the second quarter all the way to the fourth. To add insult to injury, Tony Pollard, twelve carries. One case. 30 some yard. What these are your best players. Let's flip to the other side. If you're gonna make your star players have the most big effect, especially in a game that's nip and tuck, shouldn't it be in the second half? Like Tariq Hill was, like A Train and Mostert was. Because they lost the other kid, the other wide receiver, but mm-hmm. this is this has been one of the biggest problems, and I think Coach McCarthy, McCarthy has to really look at this so he don't repeat himself in history. Don't let our big name players, our athletes, our playmakers disappear during the game. C.D. Lamb right, disappeared. So, yeah. How how much of that, Nate, is yeah, obviously, you know, the, the Dolphins have a pretty good, a pretty stout D 
defensive oh, coordinator well, uh, over there. Yeah, yes, sir. A, a bad man, oh. Vic Vangio, a yes. bad man, the yes. blueprint yes. builder. Yes. So how much of it is, oh, my gosh, Lamb's killing us. Let's do something to disguise coverage. Let's change our coverage on Lamb a little bit. And they took him out. And how much of it is just maybe play calling or maybe, you know, maybe some just flat out mistakes by either Dak or or a decision maker in some way? I mean, how much goes to either side of that? I would like to say that Coach Vangio is one of the top defensive coordinators in the league. But it's sad to say offense always trump defense. You should never, ever be able to take away totally a guy's. And what I mean by that is you may have held him down to maybe one or two catches or three catches a quarter, but to disappear for whole quarters at a time? No, sir, Rad. I, okay. Co- Coach Fangio, okay. I love you. Blueprint builder, you the man. I'm not going to take anything. But C.D. Lamb is too cold-blooded to be held out. That falls solely on Dak and Coach McCarthy. If you have to throw okay. him a smoke screen, a quick screen, if you know you line them up in the backfield, I don't care how you get him the ball. And I'll give you an example. The average offensive player, wide receiver, you can throw him a five-yard hitch, and it may just be a five-yard hitch. But C.D. Yep. Lamb has shown you at Oklahoma all the way into the NFL that if you throw him a hitch or if you throw him a quick slant, big things can happen the majority of the time. You do not, as a coach or as a quarterback, stifle your 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 great your best players. C.D. is a, is borderline greatness. You know, we don't want to have to go like Amari Cooper, go all the way to Cleveland and find out how cold-blooded Amari Cooper yeah. is. We knew yeah. he was that when he was here. Okay, Amari's yeah. gone. You did that so CD can open it, so you can open the doors for CD. Don't we? You as an organization stifle him. We stifled CD Got last it. week. We stifled Tony Park, Tony uh, uh, Pollard last Pollard. week. Yeah. I mean, you gave this guy ten million dollars. Now, at the beginning of the year, I was all for 10, 15, 20 touches, ramping him up, getting ready for the playoffs. But now you end up a playoff run right now. That thing started two weeks ago with Philadelphia. You know, you in a playoff run, and this cat averaging 12 touches a, a, a game? You, you, what, what are you waiting on? Time is running out. Yeah. Yeah. This guy got to yeah. see 25 touches. You know, uh, I, I, I had no problem with Lemke uh, getting that ball. Um, you know, yeah. but you got to be aware that you're working with a new guy as a quarterback. And you got to be, hey, man, let's make sure we we get this handoff correct. You know, uh, uh, I'm down yeah, with Lemke. I, I was... I was thinking about you and our discussion last week on the show. They're down there. They're handing it to a big guy because, you know, we talked about how, you know, either Pollard or or either uh, uh, Dowdle, they're not great in that bang through situation. I thought, here they go. They're going to give it to a big old fullback. And then he dropped it. Yeah. But, okay, it happened. But with three minutes and 27 seconds, who had the lead? Did the Cowboys yeah, not have Cowboys a lead? defense. Through all of that, through the late hits, through the penalties, through the fumble, you had the lead with three twenties, with three. If I'd have told you after the first game, the New York Giants, or the first game of the year, I'd be like, hey man, but you get the Cowboys defense the uh the ball on the on the opponent's 20 with 322 yeah. left. Don't the, 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 the thing that this is coming down to, and I'm going to continue to repeat it, is can the players, the big-time players, can they make the plays to win you the games on the road? I don't care. The majority of the time on the road in playoff situations and playoff atmospheres, I don't care what no one says. If you're looking for Lemke to win you the game, Something wrong with your team. I'm looking for Tony Pollard. I'm looking for Dak. I'm looking for C.D. Lamb. I'm looking for Cook. And I'm looking for my head coach, my offensive coordinator, to get these guys the ball. I don't care how it goes. I don't care how it goes. 
You tell me one team that don't take advantage of their top players I have where they can get them the ball, and, and the only way they don't get these guys the ball is they triple and triple and, and uh, quadruple coverage on these guys. That's the only way you don't get them the ball. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about another theme from this that's been a recurring theme uh, with on the defensive side of the ball because once you started naming those guys who got to make the plays, right. I'm also thinking, you know, DeMarcus, I'm thinking Micah, I'm thinking right. these guys on the other side of the ball, right? But the one thing that's happening here, Nate, and, and again – a member of the media for 40 years, man. Right. I love it when guys speak out in the locker room and right. say something. And Micah has been, all right? He's been saying, I get held on every play, a lot of times, multiple times on every play. And the media's taking it and run with it. And they're finding pictures where, you know, one picture, he's got like a face mask. He's got an arm around him. He's got a guy chop blocking him. And, you know, they're like, look at there. See, he's right. He's right. And it's, it's fun. It's great. It's great for the media. I got to believe Charles Haley got held on a lot of plays. He never said that to us. I got to believe you held, you know, the Reggie Whites of the world you and all I these didn't? guys every chance you got. You think right? I didn't? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, sometimes, I don't know, is that, where do you stand on on Micah saying, you know, I get held on every play? I, I'm, 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 I'm going to say this. He probably does. But I, I did not. I have never compared him to Reggie White. I've never compared him to Lawrence Taylor. I've never compared him to the great players of my past that I played with because these guys found a way to get to the ball regardless. My only thing I can tell Michael Parsons, if you are that great player that you profess to be, keep playing. Let your coaches fight your battle. I'm, still speak up. I like the way he spoke up. And he said it in the correct way. He did not just go at the officials. I don't know what he does on this podcast. I don't watch it. But I know what he said after the game. And he, he handled himself correctly. Uh, continue to play. Uh, your coaches got to – your coaches during the – before the game, you know, Jimmy used to do it. Every coach do it. Hey, man, that right tackle, bro. Ooh, them hands are outside or that left tackle, but it really looked bad, you know. Just talk to the refs, you know, put a seed mm -hmm. in their mind. Uh, I mm -hmm. can't tell Parsons in today's NFL, today's society in the whole, you go out and you say what you want to say. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, if it's a conspiracy against you, then, you know, I, I don't know. But, yeah. But great players figure out a way along with their coaches. Maybe I'll have to do a little bit more five man rush. You know, uh, so uh, and, and, and obvious passes down, which maybe you have to, you know, you know, man over the center, man over both guards, man over both. You know, maybe you have to go a five man rush. You already play single high safety and you do a lot of man to man coverage. So you ought to be able mm -hmm. to do a lot of five man rush. So I, mm -hmm. I don't know what the answer is. I can't tell this kid not to say what he feel is happening to him. Uh, I don't watch enough film to know uh, I've, I've seen him being held. I mean, and it, some of it is bad, I've, but I've always seen it where he's been single blocked too, and he didn't get to the quarterback. So it, it, that's not my job, you know, to, yeah. uh, to be on that crusade for or against. But you handle your business, Michael. Let the coaches help you out where they can, and uh, just continue to play. Continue to play as hard as you can and be the, the greatest you can. You were an outspoken person in the locker room back in the days. You, you spoke your mind, right. which we loved. That's why we were around you all the time. Um, did, did you guys get coached on that, Nate? Like where to draw the line, where to stop, what to say, what not to say, or was that, or did you talk about it amongst yourselves, what? or how did that evolve for you? Uh, this thing about ten years ago or twelve years ago evolved with the refs. The refs used to be. Uh, not seen or heard. They 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 regulated the game uh, with uh, with now everybody knowing the percentages, the uh, you know what this ref does, what his crew does, what they do, who at home in a way. It's not in, only in the NFL; it's in the NBA. Uh, uh, look at uh, 
Paul and the ref with his situation. Yep. It's probably some uh, umps in baseball that guys be yes, like, oh, abs- my God. Absolutely. We in a society have made regulators the key to every game. You know, we have made refs, uh, Ed Hockley, his son, and all, I mean, it don't matter. We have made refs uh, big in this game. Now, and I know they are human. I know that they don't mind turning on their mics, speaking and talking. So they got kids too. Granddaddy, we saw you. Daddy, I mean, yeah. so uh, it, does that sway a call or does that make a call? I don't know. You know, just like, you know, people saying Parsons need to be quiet because these refs are human. Okay, if we're going to put that human aspect on it that they – uh Parsons is hurting their feelings and calling them out. Well, don't we got a few refs that want to be seen on TV, that want to uh, yeah. step up so their kids can see them like our kids see us or the fans see us? And, you know, can you imagine a, a ref say, hey, man, he go to work on Saturday. I'll be go to work on Monday. Hey, bro, well, we saw that call you made. Wow, man, that was, that was something else. Yeah, man, I had to do it. I mean, so I don't, I don't know what a ref does. You know, I, I know they're supposed to have the utmost integrity. They're supposed to have the, be- the best background checks. Uh, and I like to leave it like that. Me personally, yeah, I like to yeah. think that these guys have great integrity. Uh, the game is so fast. The guys are so big. Uh, they may miss a lot. and they. But when they call something, it's pretty close and almost a lot of times accurate. So I'm not here to knock a ref. But I, I do know this right here. Parsons, boy, uh, he's he's doing a lot to expose them, whether that's good or bad. We'll see down the road. But you know what, Parsons? Okay. You better play your best, man, because here mm-hmm. come Detroit, and they are physical, mm-hmm. and they are mean. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, know, I want to get to Detroit in one second, but I do know where um, where Ed Hockley used to get those speeches to, from people. Right. Hey, man, I saw your call. It was at the gym. And he was in there, and he and he never had a leg day. Right, he, he was in there working them oh, arms. Yeah. Oh yeah, know? oh yeah, man. I mean, yeah. he ain't seen a dumbbell he didn't like, man. I promise you. No, that's so true. Uh, let's talk about Detroit because they had a big win um, this past week to get to eleven wins on the season, which is, you know, I mean, just it's been since uh, 93 since they won a division, Nate, 30 years since they won the division. They're feeling very good about themselves. But I'm, you know, I grew up there, as you know, I'm a lifelong Lions fan. I'm not believing, man. I'm still thinking it's fool's gold just because of this huge history I have with them. You look at it more objectively than I do. What do you think of this team coming in here? Dan Campbell. Yeah, Dan Campbell. I love him. Dan Campbell has done a few of the things that I see Coach Johnson did. You cannot tell me that anybody would be saying Jerry Goff is a good quarterback. You couldn't when they traded from this kid from the Rams. You couldn't tell me the Detroit fans was like, "Wow." We got, but we we got something special coming in here. But Dan Campbell did. You couldn't tell me that the offensive line, the way he was putting it together, that people was happy because you could have been drafting wide receivers, you could have been drafting running backs. But Dan Campbell did. You couldn't tell me the way that defense was two years ago. You know, running around, looking rampant, looking raggedy, not knowing where to go. You couldn't tell me the fans didn't believe in that they believed in that defense, but Dan Campbell did. I'm telling you, I've heard some of the stories behind closed doors, how he never has a bad day, how he's always positive, how he's always uh, got time for his players or ownership to tell him in the direction he wants to go for this team. Uh, his unwavering uh, intensity. You know, players can tell when you're fake. Ain't nothing yeah. fake about Dan Campbell. Mm-hmm. Uh, this team is who he is, a physical, hardworking uh, team. 
you look at their stats defensively, they have no uh, overall, uh, like last week we played West, uh, Miami, they had 48 sacks. They had four guys, three guys with eight, or, with eight with seven sacks or more. They had four guys with five sacks or more. I mean, they they had uh, 14 uh, interceptions, uh, 15, uh, 13 fumbles. They, this team was just, Miami was it, you know? Yeah. You know? But Dan Campbell, the thing that you can say about their defense, they give up 90 yards rushing a game, 3.7. They 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 hard nose, they physical, guys be where they're supposed to be. And for the majority of the time, they getting guys off the field. What I mean by that, they getting offenses off the field. It's third and whatever, they getting you off the field. It ain't so much the turnovers, uh, it ain't so much the the fumbles. Because I think they only got six or seven fumble recoveries. Is that they right now? He's still building his team, and he's just getting you off the field. Remind me a lot of Jimmy. That's how we started out. You know, just get off the field. Third and third and whatever. Get off the field. First and second downs was our biggest downs. Until you start getting those playmakers, those guys that can actually intercept a lot of balls, or mm-hmm. uh, you mm-hmm. you learn the offense, the defense so well. So now you know where you can take your chances. This team is sturdy. This team is hard. Uh, you don't have to believe in them. You don't have to believe in them. Uh, they had some some funny losses, like the, to the Bears, 30, 20, yeah. 13, yeah. you know, in, in week 14. Uh, but they have lost to good teams. Seattle yeah. in week two, 37, 31 overtime. Uh, Baltimore, they got thrashed yeah. by Baltimore, but so did San yeah. Francisco, you know. Yeah. Uh, they lost yeah. to Green Bay. Their nemesis, you know, in week 12, 22, 29. You have weird losses sometimes, Rad, but this is a physical team. Uh, like everybody was promoting how the Cowboys never lose two in a row, you know. And I was telling people, it, it, you, you're in a part of the season now where it, it ain't about your stats. It's about December football. It's about pre-playoff football. It's about what do you do in December? Because you have went through the ups and downs. Now it is time to put everything together so you can start making a run for the playoffs. And this is what Detroit seemed to have done for themselves. They are winning games. Some of them are not pretty, but they are winning games. They're 11 and 4. You know, all they got to do is win one more. Uh, and, and, and the 49ers may, may lose one more. They could be have a, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They have home field all the way. Yeah, yeah. Their, their stuff is more realistic to me than Dallas because everybody keeps saying that Philly, a Philly, a Philly, but Dallas ain't winning. Here, but see, Detroit people can say if, if, if because they're winning, they're 11 and four, we're 10 and five. You know, we, we're saying, okay, we need for Philadelphia to lose. But you got to keep winning. You're not upholding your end of the bargain. What you call it? Have yeah. won their division. They 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 yeah. are they come for champs. They 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 they, yeah. they 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 eleven and four. It ain't nothing. Green Bay uh, or Tampa. Uh, well, not Tampa, but Green Bay or the rest of them guys can do the bear. It ain't nothing they can do. They throw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems to me along those lines, Nate, as I look at the two teams matching up this Saturday night uh, at AT AT&T, it seems to me, though, that the Cowboys have more talent. Uh, True? They have Michael Parsons on defense. Right. Y'all have uh, a kid y'all drafted. Aiden Hutchins. Oh, yeah, a couple years ago, you had a big kid out of Michigan. He's a good player now. He's yeah, a baller. He is. He's a shot caller. <laughs> he gets interceptions. He bats down yeah. balls. He got two forced fumbles. No, nah, man. No, no, no. Got about seven, eight. Th- See, I'm going to tell you something. You, everybody talking about pressure. And everybody, but well, Hutchins does this thing. Uh, let, let me, it's, it's another kid. Let me get him right. Uh, number 54, Liam McNeil. D- yeah. <laughs> These dudes making plays, man, and they're okay. helping their team make plays. They getting off the field on 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 third down. This is 
this is where I I, I I just I feel so bad for cowboy fans. Talent without direction and discipline does not win you games. A little less talent, a little more direction and discipline wins you games. Jimmy used to tell us, fellas, all I'm asking you to do is cut down on the penalties. No dumb penalties. Study your playbook. Understand what you have to do. And no one can beat us because we're more talented. He's but if you don't study, then you go out here on this road, especially on the road, and you have these dumb penalties, we lose the game. Mm -hmm. Fans are so caught up in the forest. Oh, we're the Dallas Cowboys. We're going on the road. We have more talent. We got fans coming in by the millions, buying up all the tickets on the other. But your players are not disciplined. They're not paying attention to details. So when we get in a close game, a dog fight, and we come up short, then we start to say, well, if this team would do this for us, if we can just pay Philly off. See, I feel like we may have to need to pay Philly off more than we need to pay the refs off because we <laughs> we keep waiting on what to see what Philly going to do instead Boy, of no the kidding. Dallas Cowboys taking care no of their kidding. business. Yeah. You you listen to every show everywhere that is Cowboy favorites and you hear about I I'll be like is Philly on our payroll? What what do we do? Yeah. Because all I hear about is if Philly do this and Philly do that, well, won't Dallas just win their games? Right. Concentrate. And I know Coach McCarthy is concentrating on his troops. But we yeah. as fans got to start saying, I hear you, Parsons, but it was three minutes and 27 seconds left in the game. We needed a sack. We needed a fumble. I hear you, uh, the kid back in there with with, with his eight, five, and six uh, big picks and all of that. You know, we needed one. We needed a stop. Uh, Never Gallimore. This is this is what I I agonized over that game against Miami. I did the media thing. I said. The defense only gave up 22 points. Yeah. Oh, they only got scored on once. I said to myself, man, Dak was under the rest all day. He made play after play. He came down the stretch, took off all the way except three minutes and 27 seconds. Oh, my. I, I, I went through all of that right there. But yep. it came down. The Jimmy Johnson locked into my head. You hear me, Raz? The Jimmy Johnson locked yeah. into my head. Yeah. Who's going to make the play with yeah. three minutes and 27 seconds left in the game? Yeah. Yep. And Tariq Hill, and you, wind, Tariq Hill wind up making the plays to get right. his kicker, him and his yep. quarterback and his kicker, the, the game-winning field goal. That's who made the play, the Miami Dolphins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You have mentioned Jimmy Johnson quite a few times in this show. And I don't uh, I don't think there's any coincidence that he is in, on your mind yes. and in your mind. I know he's I know he's there all the time, yes. like on your he's like on your shoulder, like those little yeah, devil little, and the angel. Yeah, but, it's a good yeah, Jimmy and a bad yeah. Jimmy. I've seen both of them yeah, before. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. but I know he's there all the time, but especially this week, man, because he's going into the ring of honor. And I know especially for all you guys that played for him, uh, this is overdue and it is uh it is long awaited, and I'm sure it's going to be a very special night for all of you as well as for him. Yes, I, I wish all of his players that, especially the guys that went through the hard times with Jimmy uh, in the two Super Bowls, a lot of guys won't get a chance to be there. But, hey, man, I, they'll be there in heart and in spirit. Uh, Coach Johnson meant so much to the program. Him and Jerry built built this city, man. You know, and, 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 and they revamped. Organization that was uh, financially, 
mentally and spiritually just wrecked. And they came in and they and they put their heads together, man, two Arkansas boys and did what they had to do. And they built this thing. And, you know, and, and as two alpha males normally do, they knock heads. And and yeah. uh, Coach Johnson moved on. And for years and years, you know, uh, uh, Coach uh, Johnson went Hall of Fame, Mr. Jones Hall of Fame. And then here we go, two guys both Hall of Fame guys, two guys that revitalized a whole organization, uh, couldn't get together. Man, when they got together and, and announced this thing, I, I was just so happy. I was elated. We was doing a show at the time. I don't know what game it was a couple of weeks ago. And I just wanted to stop and talk about Coach Johnson and all yeah. those good times. Man, I'm so excited that he's going in. I'm so excited that I will be there. Uh, and I'm just so upset that a lot of my guys won't be there to 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 hug Coach Johnson, to shake his hand, or either to cuss him out. Cause you know it was a love hate with Coach Johnson. It's half yeah, of them guys yeah. hate him, and the rest of them love him. I'm one of them guys yeah. that love him because he he to help me take my career to a new level. So I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm one of the uh, the many guys that love him. I, you know he national championship, Super Bowls. Uh, uh, Ring of Honor, Hall of Fame, uh, probably in the College Hall of Fame. I mean, how many guys have those type of accolades behind them? You know, now I've uh, been on uh, Fox for, man. Yeah. You know, so I, I mean, how many guys have that type of uh, uh, stuff behind them like that, man? I mean, you know, I, like I said, you know, my glory go to God, man. But, you know, we can say uh, uh, good things about those who are on this earth like Jimmy, man, who who sacrificed. Like I like I tell people, he lost a lot, you know, uh, families and mothers and fathers. And just because he was so focused, you know, uh, he may look back and wish he would have did it a different way. But we are where we are right now. And that's him finna get this thing on Saturday to ring on him, man. And, uh. The greatest thing we can do for him now is win this game. I mean, I am so yes. nervous because normally when you have ring ceremonies, ring of honors, Hall of Fame ceremony, normally you lose the game. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason, even if the players have nothing to do with Coach Johnson, they don't even know this, man. It seems like you lose the game because the other team be like, we'll show them, you know, having an yeah. extra long halftime or they talking about this Jimmy Johnson. Who is this Jimmy Johnson? You know, like, hey. Yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. Here we go, man. Love you, Coach yeah. Johnson. That's my boy, Rad. You know, that's my boy. That's my boy. Oh, man, I he love that He let Nate be yeah. Nate, man. He let me be yeah. me. I, and, yeah. and what more can you ask for? Coach Johnson, you know, like I, like I used to tell everybody, he say, uh, you know, I got rules and I, and I got our priorities and I judge every player not the same. <laughs> some can get right. away with some things and some yeah. can't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, everybody is not <laughs> equal in his book. No, no. You fall asleep in a meeting, you get cut. Oh, yeah. Unless you're Emmett Smith, you and then I'll gently wake you up. Yes, sir. You know? yeah. Yes, sir. Hey, <laughs> yeah. hey, tell, yeah. hey, tell Emmett to move to the side so we have a crick in his neck when he wake up. <laughs> 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 That's fantastic. Wow. Uh, yeah, so we're uh, really, it would be so nice to, to get a win. And, and with uh, now two losses in a row. The team hadn't lost two lo two in a row in two years. Um, you feel like there's a, I mean, I, I, there's a fight, right? There's a fire in these guys to make sure they don't lose three. Plus, they've been so good at home, right? So are we feeling good about this week uh, with all those factors? The thing that yeah, I have so much respect for Dan Campbell. Yeah. And and like I tell people, if you really want to get out to the Cowboys, run the ball and be stubborn. Every team that has ran the ball, every good team, and I think Dan Campbell has a good team, have been stubborn. They try to play us close. They come with a two, uh, two high safeties. They make Dak have to take an extra read here and there to try to slow down our offense. And they – are stubborn. And we'll know in the first half if Coach Campbell is going to be stubborn about running that ball. But if we get a yeah. 10 to 12 point lead, uh, we back we back doing our thing. 
The Cowboys are back. They, they, they trying to get pressures and sacks and all of that. But the better teams in this league, they're, they're like – the thing that I tell people right about now, it's not about who got the talented team. It's about who's not willing to take chances and make dumb mistakes. Dan Campbell's team is not going to make dumb mistakes. Now, yeah. I, at least I haven't seen it on film yet. Uh, we all get penalties, but they're not going to be in crucial times. And what the Cowboys have to do is they at home, they feel comfortable. I guess they feel bigger at home than they do it on the road. So, that, you know, they'll be pumped up. They'll be hyped. But these penalties, they got to stop. Yep. Our offensive line, they haven't played well the last two weeks. Y'all have this this Hutchinson kid and the other kid, McNeil. They're going to get after us, man. They're going to get after the Dallas Cowboys. And if we're not careful, Detroit can make things very difficult. That's home our way. Nobody cares about your home record. Now, I, I'm being honest. It's December. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. just being honest. I, and, 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 you know, this one thing I like about this podcast is I don't have to, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm giving you the real. Yeah, that's I care what, about that's what I love yeah. about it. Oh, that's man. what I love. Yeah, the Cowboys ain't lost uh, and did that. Come on, bro. This ain't this ain't this this ain't this ain't the time of year for this. You, you know, two days ago, three days ago, when it was Christmas. Yeah, that was the season. Yeah, you be jolly, be happy. Them dudes don't care nothing about <laughs> Miami. They care nothing about <laughs> yeah, the Cowboys. Don't lose two in a row. They was trying to win because they trying to catch Kansas City. Yeah, they got goals too. Detroit ain't trying to hit this. Detroit has got a realistic goal. And the realistic goal is don't slip 49ers. Do we'll be the team yep. that's sitting home with the first round by. That is more realistic yep. than us. Hey, uh, Philadelphia, we hate you, but can you do us a yeah. favor? Can you lose yeah. <laughs> one more game? Come on, Cowboys. Where's our Texas pride? Where, where, where we yeah. do things big in Texas? Where we ain't got the rope out and we wrangling everybody and horse and, and healing everybody. Man, come on. We used to yeah. we used to brand Longhorns. Now, now we getting branded. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. Yes. Yes. This is what I'm talking about right here, Nate. And I, I you said it so well, man. This is not the stuff. This is this is Nate unplugged right yes, here on this real, show. Man. Right. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Nate gives it to you real. And we all look, we're all in the media, we have bosses, right? We yes. have things we have to say Editors, certain times bosses, to keep it quick. Right? We can Absolutely. Weak, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, but man, this is Nate unplugged because I ain't gonna rein you in, and and you go, man. Yeah, man, you just, go. It's it, it's it's time to play smart football. It's time to play hard football. It's December. You've lost Buffalo, Miami. Don't lose Detroit. It, it, it stop. You have to win a game. You have to get ready to run, make a run in the playoffs. And I'm not. If I hear one more, if we're going to be where we want to be, 20, 20, almost 30 years, hey, fellas, some of y'all weren't even born. Or y'all was right. under the age of 10. You don't know where yeah. you want to be because you yeah. haven't gotten close enough to smell where you want to be. No. Stop with where you want to be. It's all right to want to be in a Super Bowl. It's all right to wish to be in a Super Bowl, but you have to play to be in the Super Bowl. We have not played the last two weeks or with three minutes and 27 seconds left in the Miami game to be in a Super Bowl. You have to start winning those type of games. That's fantastic, Nate. We done flushed another one thanks to Niagara, yes. man. Yes. That is yes. That is great. I'm drinking great, my coffee, uh, man. I'm finna go flush. I'm finna flush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got some flushing to do. <laughs> awesome, Nate. Uh, we'll look forward to doing this again next week. We'll be hoping for a, a great night where you get to see Coach and and uh, and 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 the Cowboys win. All right, thank you, Rad. You have a good one to tell All your right, family. Merry we'll Christmas. Hey, Dub Network. Merry Christmas. Oh.